Hey guys, Zeke here. On the last video we did, we talked about spring seed locators and valve springs. And we obviously addressed the clearance issue and what you should look for between both the spring and the seed locator. In this video, we're going to go on the opposite side and we're going to talk about the titanium retainer side of the spring. And what to look for when obviously installing a retainer in spring and what it is to have too much clearance and what happens to a titanium retainer when you have too much clearance in that area. So looking at what, how we manufacture, you know, we always look at obviously tolerances between valve springs. You know, we could do a batch of valve springs and the tolerance obviously sometimes vary and sometimes it's greater, sometimes it's less. Tolerances on valve springs are always a situation where it's always greater. So you want to obviously gear up and manufacture a retainer to where that fitment is what we call a press fit on the titanium. So press fit, so you're looking at a retainer really going into that spring and you're pressing it on where there's very minimal clearance between both those areas. That obviously allows for a lot less wear throughout that bottom side of that retainer when you have excess amount of RPM horsepower, you know, you're running a really large camshaft on the engine. This obviously improves quite a bit of that wear throughout. Now, we actually do a lot of testing with our physical C6 Ferrea Corvette on SV2 heads. And all this testing that we typically do is a lot that we do on our typical valve train components. So we look at our valves, we look at our springs, we look at our retainers. And this obviously improves the product where we're testing new materials, we're testing new coatings, we're testing new processes to see how well this actually works in the engine in this type of environment. Our C6, C6 Corvette actually runs in the Trans Am class uh, and we run it obviously continuous throughout the year um, in that class and we're very obviously very competitive. This brings us back to where Let's look at this initial two retainers that we've taken off our SV2 heads. And we're gonna show you here how the wear characteristics been very minimized on three events that these titanium retainers were used in because of these different tips that we actually uh, do and the process how we actually do the installation between the retainer and the spring. So one thing obviously is a press fit, which we already looked at that. You look at the minimum amount of clearance between both those sides, and that will obviously improve the wear on the retainer. The other side is to look at dressing the spring now. Dressing a spring is where you see where both the top and bottom side of that spring is chamfered or cut off completely when the manufacturing process is finished throughout that spring. So what we do is we actually grab a nice size of, of metal underneath the wire and then we actually get a Dremel and we round that edge off. We round the top edge and the bottom edge of the spring where it's been cut off to again improve the amount of wear on the bottom side of that retainer. This improves it enormously because again you have a retainer that's going to move and that's really prominent in any valve train where you're going to have some valve float, whether the valve float is continuous or it obviously uh, goes away, you're still going to have some type of valve float inside that engine. And the spring obviously needs movement, the retainer needs movement as well as the valve area needs some movement. So obviously dressing the spring, rounding the edge off on the top and bottom will improve quite a bit of the wear characteristic on the bottom of that retainer throughout. Thanks for watching guys. Leave us a comment. Till next time.